Good morning, students. This is Jennifer Campbell, Library Director for Community Care College. You are listening to Module 1.1, Lecture 1.1, to accompany Introduction to Library Services, Library Theory, and Mission. Today we'll be talking about some of the philosophy behind library services. We'll also be talking about a library's mission, vision, and core values statement. This is S.R. Ranganathan. He was a pioneer in libraries and originally a mathematician. He used scientific and empirical studies to study the library behavior of patrons. Ranganathan observed five essential laws of libraries. These are said in few words and are still used in library science today. His first law says that books are for use. This means that collections should not be amassed for personal vanity but for use by the patrons. He justified collecting items with little use in terms of their potential use to patrons. This is the essential difference between a library and a museum in that materials collected by libraries, including multimedia materials, are to be used by the patrons and not simply for archival purposes. The second law says every book its reader. Ideally, library materials should be acquired in terms of their potential use by the patrons. Materials shouldn't be acquired in the abstract or just because they've been gifted or just because someone has gotten tired of their old materials. Materials should be acquired with its potential use in mind. The third law states every book its reader. That means that as a library professional, you should be the connection between the user and their reading material. Not necessarily just books. Digital resources, magazines, periodicals, they're all included in this law, every book its reader. Ranganathan meant that reading is the path to wisdom, and every user is entitled to be put on that path. The fourth law states, save the time of the reader. This means that as library professionals or library staff, we should realize that the time of our patrons is precious, and that we shouldn't waste it by being inefficient in our use of information. We should strive to be service oriented and serve our customers quickly and efficiently. The fifth law and final law states that the library is a growing organism. It grows and thrives and also it can shrink and die if it's not properly taken care of. We should plan for active growth, including leaving empty space on the shelves and planning for new materials. We should also plan for new patrons and for our library to get bigger and bigger. Now let's get a little bit more specific. We're going to talk about the information hierarchy, including data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. Simply put, data is symbols, a collection of symbols. It can be numbers, letters, or shapes. Data itself has no meaning until it's organized and analyzed and put into patterns. For example, you wouldn't recognize what these numbers on the screen meant unless you knew something specific about them. Information is data that has been organized and put into a decipherable format. For example, once letters are organized into words, then you can recognize them as a complete word. Or once a number has been put into a recognizable format, then you can recognize it. For example, the sign says 100 meters. 100 as data isn't recognizable, but once you know that 100 meters is a distance, that's useful information to you. Information may or may not be correct. This is what keeps it from being knowledge. Knowledge is information that has been widely accepted to be true. For example, you might know that your house is at a certain location and that is your address. You might know that your eye color is green or that your shirt is red. There isn't any good or best or best practices attached to the knowledge. Knowledge is, some, is just something that we know to be true. Wisdom is a collection of society's best knowledge, largely obtained by trial and error. For example, it might be wise to take an umbrella outside if you know that it is raining. 
You wouldn't know this unless you had gone outside and gotten rained on previously, before you had decided to bring your umbrella. This is a graphical representation of the information hierarchy. You can see that it's organized as a pyramid because there is far more data in the world than wisdom. For example, information is data that has been organized into a decipherable, decipherable format, but not all data is information. Knowledge is information that we accept to be true, but not all information is true, so that doesn't make it knowledge. Wisdom is the best selection of knowledge according to our society. Not all knowledge is wisdom, so that's why wisdom is the smallest section in the pyramid. Now we'll discuss my version of the library hierarchy. I've developed this in five layers with the most basic library functions on the bottom layers and the most advanced library functions on the top layers. You can see that you have to go through three layers to be classified as a library according to Rong and Nathan's law, books are for use. The first layer in the library hierarchy is the physical space. Books, shelves, computers, and the purpose of this is for acquisition. Once you have a collection, that's all it is, just a collection. You have to add more layers to truly become a library. The next layer is organization. This can be classified according to Dewey or Library of Congress, and you should also have a catalog. This is to manage your assets and prepare for patron access. With the addition of a library professional, you can allow for patron access and circulation with a searchable online public access catalog. This is what makes a library. With the addition of teaching, you can add a layer, which is information literacy. This is to develop independent consumers of information so that your users can find the information they're looking for quickly, easily, and efficiently. The final layer is the mentality of patron empowerment. And this is where we get advocacy from. Your patrons will advocate the use of the library if they realize how important using resources really is. Now we're going to talk about a library's mission, vision, and core values statement. A mission statement is similar to a goal statement in that it outlines what your organization is trying to accomplish. This can be the mission for the year, for a certain term, or indefinitely. A vision statement outlines where you see your organization in a certain number of years. This determines where you want your organization to go and what path you hope to take to get there. Your value statement outlines the core values that your organization hopes to take with them along the way. Your core values also prepare you for new growth, educating new employees on the values that your organization has. Thank you for joining us. This has been Lecture 1.1 in Module 1.1 of Introduction to Library Services.